What's up, YouTubers? So for today's video, I got a little experiment. Now, if you've been watching my channel, I've done a number of bend tests on thicker steel. Well, I did flux core wire and MIG, and the results kind of for a single pass weren't really that good, which I wouldn't really expect, I guess, because neither of those processes, at least gasless flux core anyways, is going to have that much penetration on 3 8 plate. It just isn't. So I thought, why not bust out some 7018s, run a couple passes, bend test it, and see what happens. So that's what we're going to tackle today. Let's get into it. So what we got here is four beads with 7018. Now this one on the right, uh, I managed to place at a 45 degree angle here. So it's placed exactly where I would like it. There's very little, there's pretty much no weld defects on this. Piece, appears to be a little bit of undercut here, but whatever. So this is all right. This one, I kind of purposely just <laughs> drug the arc where it shouldn't be. Pretty much a defective weld, but I think it's still going to have some strength. This one here really wasn't my fault. I'll be, well, actually, yeah, it was, but I had arc blow at the end. And if you look at this, like there's big buckshot all over, there's undercut here. And I had uh, to change my ground location and then that went away for the fourth test. But so we sort of have a defective weld, but not really. I mean, for this sake, I don't think we're gonna see a huge difference in strength. And then on this last weld here, I purposely held a little bit long of an arc and you probably can't see it, but the whole top toe line is undercut. Now, for the sake of a bend test that we're doing, where we're bending it to the face, I don't think that's going to really make any strength difference. Where that would come in play is bending it away from the face, or if uh, you stress that enough, like if you tried, if the weld held and then you bent it, it would crack the plate right there. So that would be my thought on that. But for what we're doing today, I don't think it's going to make a difference. Now, I said this in my previous video, and I'm going to say it again. This test where we bend it to the face is not necessarily, how do I put it? It's not that it's an unrealistic test because something you weld where you only have access to the front of it may actually get stressed this way, and it is a good indication of strength. But the numbers that we're dealing with in this testing are not really relevant other than to themselves. And what I mean by that is I break all of these, the numbers that we see, I guess it's going to tell us which one of these is stronger and we'll be able to tell if these are actually stronger than the flux core or MIG welds that I did in a previous video. But it's not really an absolute test because what you guys have to understand is, well, for one, this plate is 3 8 thick. This is not an adequate weld size for this thickness of material. I'm only looking at a single pass, so this would need at least two more passes to be proper size for this. So our strength is less than it should be. And the other thing is, on this thin a material with these welds, any little bit of, how do I put it, like this weld here is sunk a little bit more into the bottom plate, I guess, and has undercut. Any little change can make a huge difference, and it's just simply very difficult to be consistent with a single pass on this thick a plate. So I don't expect our results to be, you know, super accurate, but hey, we can at least, as a, as a home hobbyist, we can look at some numbers and at least get an idea of what's going on. Now, the last thing I'll say before we actually break test these, in my previous testing, I've seen that uh, 7018 does have very good penetration in comparison to short arc MIG on thicker plates. So I already know that we're going to have some root penetration and we should see that on the actual test. So with that said, let's get into it. All right, for our first test, we're going to do the plate that has slight undercut along the whole top toe and the weld is also hit the bottom plate more than the upright plate. All right, here we go. And we're broke. We're at 
Let me zero this out. All right, plate number two, this had arc below and basically defective, high spatter, there's undercut. It's, I would say, the worst out of the welds, arguably. Let's test it. And we were at 79.7. Which the interesting thing on that one, it definitely felt a little bit stronger than the first one. I heard some crunching from it. Who knows what that was? You probably heard it too, maybe. All right, this one is probably, I don't know, I guess this is probably the most effective. There's lack of fusion, cold toes. Really hard to say how this will perform. That was 74.8, so actually really not that bad, I guess, all things considered, pretty interesting. One thing too, and I kind of mentioned it in the previous video I did this on, with the flux core wire, it, and it had like a completely different feel to it than these. So this feels kind of like a MIG weld where when I bend it, it just feels like after a certain point, like it's just bending the metal, like it's, how do I put it? Like it's just stretching the metal for, for this and for the MIG welds. Now with the flux core wire, it felt like the weld was like brittle where I put force, 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 and all of a sudden it went from like really hard to zero and it just like broke through the weld. So I find that pretty interesting the flux core uh, welds didn't seem to have like any ductility. Like it was just hard and cracked and that was it, which I have heard that flux core wire for the common wires that we use at home tend to be more brittle than say 7018 or short circuit gas shielded MIG. And at least in my small scale testing thus far, it definitely seems to be like that. The welds seem to be more brittle without a doubt. All right, the last one, which this is arguably, I would say, the cleanest weld. All right, let's go. And we made it to, oh, of course a reset because I'm an idiot. 74 something it looked like, 73. All right, well, let me uh, bring these down to the table, reposition, and let's look at what we got. The first thing I'm gonna mention is kind of interesting. So I bent all of these, as you can see, and somehow a little piece of the weld metal is still hanging on to where they're all one piece still no don't get me wrong there's no strength because like one percent of the weld is still holding but it goes to show i guess how much elongation and ductility a 7018 weld has and like i had said earlier the feeling i had when bending this is like it gave but then it was still holding on almost like it was plastic like it had stretch to it those flux core welds that i did had no ductility it felt like i was bending a you know, spring steel and then it just snapped. So I find that pretty interesting. But with that said, let's uh, bend this back, break it and look at it. So this was the weld that had, you can see, arc blow. When we look at this, and let me focus. Looking at it through here, I can see that, like you can see it melted that edge and penetrated in. And although we have somewhat of a clean line here, that isn't actually the original plate edge because this is thinner. So it appears as though the weld itself broke, not the plate. The weld did not pull off the plate. This is all weld metal here. And when we look at this, same deal here, only the weld broke. 
pretty interesting. So this, I would say, has more penetration than that short arc MIG, not by a whole lot, to be honest, but it does. And it has, I would say, arguably about, yeah, I would say maybe more penetration than a flux core too. Now the weld metal itself, there's a couple shiny spots, but those are not pores or anything. Same thing down here if you look at that. I don't see really any evidence of porosity. This is all looking really clean. So unlike the flux core wire weld in the last test I did, there is no evidence of porosity. So that's good. And that I think really led itself with the flux core for uh, lower results. Now, let's take a look at this. So this one, interestingly enough, has less evidence of penetration. Now, looking at this, this was, okay, sure. This was, the weld was sunk. Let me focus this. The weld hit the bottom plate more than the top. If you look at this, and I'll try and get it to where you can see, it's hit into the bottom plate far more than the top. So the issue going on here was this had less functional strength simply because it wasn't at a 45 degree angle. The weld itself on this looks pretty clean, but the original edge of the plate you can see how clean that is. You know, there's no question that very minimal penetration. So that was really a failure more or less of where I had the rod angle at, but no porosity in it. Still actually was fairly strong, so that's good. Let's look at this one. Don't mind this underneath as well. There we go. That's from the previous testing. Yeah, I don't really see any evidence of porosity in this one either. This right here, I don't think is porosity. It just looks like it pulled off of there. So the weld looks real clean to me. So that's good. This one was, yeah, so this was just straight in, no real weld defects. Everything looks good in that respect. Now this tow line, we can actually see, this is probably the original edge somewhat right here. So that isn't so much good. This is all broken down and fused in. It's hard to say actually. No, you know what, that probably isn't the original edge. Again, looks all right, not the greatest penetration, but we're all right there. And then let's look at this last one here. There we go, if I can get it straight. So this went like this. You can see that it, it rather than breaking down the middle of the weld, it actually broke along this, which is a lot different when you look at all these other ones. Like this is just an example. Broke down the middle, pretty much broke down the middle. Same deal here, it broke down the middle. Well, this one, tore off the bottom plate. So this would be an undesirable result, which kind of makes sense because if you look here, I left this here where it was basically lack of fusion. And that's why you don't want cold toes because under stress, it's going to peel a weld clean off the plate. So this would be an undesirable break result. You want to see it break right down the middle of the weld. Penetration wise on this, I would say let me get it focused. You can see here that there's unquestioned that is the original plate edge in there. So very little fusion where I kind of long arced it and just had a poor cold toe here as well. Yeah, I mean, it literally just peeled right off the plate right there. So yeah, weld defects make a difference. Now, the actual functional strength on the test results, it wasn't like it was 40% weaker, but there's no question it was weaker. And where you can really run into issues with weld defects like this actually has more to do with the longevity of it. As this gets stressed 
and flexed like this, you're just giving a place for a crack to start right here. So that's really why those are undesirable. And not that this is a video on how to fix stuff, but if you were to take an angle grinder and V-bevel this out and then run a pass over it, you could fix that and it would retain most of the strength. All right, I think we covered that pretty well. Let's go to conclusion. Well, what did we learn today? <laughs> learned I got a big pile of <laughs> junk steel here. No, actually, I learned quite a bit in this and that I'm kind of surprised that our test results weren't as significantly different as I would have thought, especially on that one with the cold toes. It, it was fairly strong, so I mean, that's a plus, but none of these are very strong when you bend them towards the face, which is to be expected. I will be doing bends where I bend it against the face to stretch it, and that will also have, I think, huge differences, probably more so than this way, because we're using the weld as leverage. But yeah, I mean, weld defects aren't really desirable. It will have a change in strength. I like the way that these things bent, like from the feel of it, definitely a lot more than the flux core because it just seemed to stretch and have more ductility. Now this, uh, in comparison to the MIG weld, I believe I had a couple MIG welds in my previous test that were stronger than these. That is not too surprising because in that video I had mentioned that the MIG welds were a fairly big weld. This is a smaller weld and this is inappropriate for the thickness of material. So again, the strength of a test like this has a lot to do with how much weld metal, more so than the root penetration. But guess what? We're gonna be doing more testing to really look at this. So in the next video, I'm probably gonna do 60-10 on the same stuff as this, and we're gonna bend it and see if that makes a difference. And this is really a mechanical strength test more than it is a tensile strength test. And what I mean by that is because we're leveraging it against itself and we're not pulling it, we're not stretching it, we're more or less just trying to tear it. I think that 6010, despite being 60,000 tensile strength, might perform better in this test uh, than 7018. And that's simply because of how much penetration that has that it's gonna fuse far into this plate and make it more difficult to leverage against it. So with that said, uh, that's what I got. If you got any comments, questions, thoughts, feel free to leave them. And until next time, guys, thanks.